The following presentation is brought to you by Discovery Education, leading the world of digital and video learning. Discovery Education, connect to a world of learning. Prepare to be amazed because Assignment Discovery is about to dazzle you with careers in visual arts. First, we'll look at the style and versatility of a popular photographer in Picture Perfect. Then, we'll see how one woman turned her fashion dreams into reality in Dress to Impress. Next, we'll follow an interior designer through the course of a typical day in A House Becomes a Home. Then, we'll look at the precise painting technique of an abstract artist in Line by Line. Finally, we'll watch as a makeup artist creates a brand new look in The Art of Beauty. Welcome to the world of art, coming up next. What are some different types of visual arts? Drawing, painting, there's sculpture. Um, you could do anything from design on computers to just working with your hands. So there's a lot of choices that you have going outside of school of what kind of work you want to do. Movies, paintings, pictures, photographs itself. Uh, oh my god, the list can go on. I love painting. I like. I like the bold, I like bold colors. They draw, they sculpt, and they like build things. And we, of course, take photographs of many different things. You can be making websites for business, or you can be making their logos. I mean, anybody can see anything as visual art. As long, I mean, if you see it as art, if you feel that it's art, I guess you can see it as art. As you watch the first part of this program, keep these questions in mind. What are some careers in visual arts? What professions require talent in design? Good photographers need to know more than how to operate a camera. In addition to having a good eye for composition, they should have an understanding of their subject matter and a creative vision of the desired results. Good. Danny Sanchez is a very popular photographer thanks to his great experience and versatility. In the course of a day, Danny will photograph kids, fashion, actors, and the occasional rock star. Just her doing her thing. Danny has been collaborating with other artists on the new magazine called D. The first issue is still a work in progress. One of Danny's shoots today may produce a cover for the first issue of the magazine. This morning, Danny and his assistant Liz scout potential locations for the cover shoot. I like it, but I don't like as much as working off the side, and getting the line. So let's just move on to another spot. We know this spot's going to be. We need a black wall. See black over there? Black plastic, huh? People are going to think we're nuts. Liz uses a light meter to measure the intensity of the outside light. That's good right there. I don't know, man. Part of me is liking this. Okay, we're going to go back. Before Danny's magazine cover shoot, the schedule is packed. Rosa is an aspiring actress. She wants a professional photo, known as a headshot, to help catch the eye of casting directors. Makeup artist Josie Vega helps Rosa get ready while Danny lights the shot. There's a big difference between where you're this close to it, it actually wraps around. The further I get from it, the less of wrapping around it'll do. And if I get even further and this wall's not there, 
So just like this side, almost like a spotlight, even though it's that big. They have different shaped faces. The light's gonna affect them differently. Already I know this has to be closer. So Rosa. Yeah? You gotta you gotta make like you've been in uh, ten movies already. Alright. Okay? Okay. You know your stuff. Okay. Don't make me work too hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like working with new people because uh, I don't want them to look new, like they're just getting in the business. Acting, we don't want to get all glamoury and stuff with it because it's for acting and somebody's going to say, well, what is she doing? It's more about your personality. This is dead on shot of you. You want them to look like they've been around. It doesn't matter what age, but you want them to look like they know their craft, they're confident. The cool thing is, too, is that they'll have to live up to those expectations. Some casting guys are going to say, wow, I like her. She looks like she knows her stuff. You're gonna create that with that shot. Make it more about the eye contact. Okay. Don't look mean either. You shouldn't make her laugh. Yes. Good. Just bottle. Look. All right. Look at the skin. She was natural. You get people that stare into the camera. That's right. She looks at the camera. She doesn't stare into it. Allow them to be themselves, and it'll be good. Bye. For Danny, photography has always been about the subject. Danny got his start in photography when he was 25. I got very lucky. He learned the craft by assisting a friend of his who was a photographer. Danny has photographed everyone from babies to celebrities. One of Danny's first big breaks came when he got to photograph the punk music group The Ramones for Spin Magazine. Somebody like the Ramones, they have an image that basically told them where to stand. You don't need to direct every person and everything and allow it to come together. Celebrities and rock stars have a lot to project. You can put them against a blank wall and just get the proper exposure and you will have a shot. You can add to that, of course, but it's not going to take a lot. Celebrities might be good at posing for photos, but Danny's next subject might not be. Hi, I'm Meryl. I'm Alexa. Oh, very cute. How are you doing? Nielsen, how are you doing? Good. And this is Jerry. Hi. Jerry, how are you doing? Good to meet you. Alexa, should we just get started with her? Sure. Who wants to be first, huh? She definitely she wants to be first. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be first, right? Yeah, I don't blame you. But these little guys, you got to get started right away. Look in the camera. Let's look. Alexa. Oh, you make a mean face. What are you doing? Wanna see? Danny knows working with kids takes patience. Mm. Don't sweat it, because you know they're not sweating it. Mexico. They're kids. They don't understand what's going on. All right, let's get this shot. I think most people, when they encounter a child, they treat them like a child. When they go into their child mode. A little more. Put your head back there. Good. Kids sort of sense when you're being a bit of a phony or you're trying to smooth them over. For the last few shots, you guys do whatever you want. I don't care. You're on your own. <laughs> when the portrait session is finished, it's time to shoot the photo for the cover of D Magazine. Model Stacy Reinitz gets made up while Danny and Liz discuss the shoot. We don't want to do the same thing, but I do like the fact that it's black and white. The whole angle is going to be on black. Wearing black is always in style. It, what's that saying? When in doubt, just wear black. There we go. That's not really a saying, <laughs> but we could say that. Almost done. I think having Stacy on the cover, first issue, is also going to work. People see it and they're just going to want to pick it up and want this magazine. That's all we got to do. Pressure's on her. Okay. Happy. We don't want too happy. We want happy, but we don't want happy shining. All right. All right. Sounds good. Well, the lights changed on us. The cloudy weather is ideal for taking pictures because harsh sunlight may cause shadows and other problems. Right, it's 11 9. 11 9. Yeah. So. 
I'm going to do a couple of tests. Liz, tell me if it looks like we have any clouds coming our way. What do you think? It's much to cut, though. If there's a cloud nearby, we'll wait for it. Good. It's getting brighter. It's getting brighter and brighter by the second. I'm going to check this out again. It's not what the doctor ordered. Oh, we got a cloud. They wait, but no clouds. It's getting brighter again. You know what we're going to do, though? We're going to try We're going to put her in the shade and still shoot in this direction, OK? See, you can do no wrong. Relax. The background is a little blown out, but um, it's going to be blown out. Yeah. It's got to make that work, I guess. Because we're not going to be able to do that other shot over there, either. Right, let's try it again. Favor this side. That's it. Right there. Nothing bad. <laughs> happy. Happy. Too happy. No good. <laughs> and I have all these jokes, too, but I, I can't tell them to you. Can't tell them. No, I can't. We're going to rethink the shot a little bit. We try again. Now we're really looking to get lucky. Danny decides not to shoot anything near the black plastic because that location is also too bright. He hadn't planned to have a studio look, but he decides to take the shoot inside. Here, he can use indirect light from the window, which is not as harsh. Likes, likes, likes. Right there, don't change that. Nice. I like the fact, see this happened by accident. I like the whole black and white thing. That's kind of unplanned. And then probably do the D in black against the white. It's like, you know, opposite thing going on there. Later on, Danny and Liz look at the day's work. Write this one down, 34, 15. Okay. See, once you get a real good one, now you can be real critical. Smile, you don't want smile. Well, so far, I'm stuck in that one shot. They look through dozens of photos, but Danny sticks with the one he liked from the beginning. He and Liz create a demo cover to present at the magazine's next creative meeting. You have your moments that you're excited and you're thrilled with what you did. But uh, you got to move on. There's another day and there's more pictures to be taken. So it just doesn't end with one shot. I, I look to rely on my subject more than anything. And that's really keeping it simple. Did you know? More than half of the working photographers in the United States are self-employed. It's helpful for a beginning photographer to work with a professional to learn how to run a successful business. A fashion designer must keep up with the most current styles and trends, as well as set them by adding something unique. Since she was a child, Heidi Weisel dreamed of being a fashion designer. Through hard work and an eye for unusual fabrics, Heidi not only realized her dream, but reached beyond it with her own label and design studio. Her elegant evening wear is a big hit with celebrities and non-celebrities alike. Today, this New Yorker will present her latest collection to an important buyer, a meeting that could make or break Heidi's fall season. Inhale, exhale. Good. Stomach in. Good. My name is Heidi Wiesel, and I'm a fashion designer. Side, side. Spread it out. Are you asleep? Breathe. <laughs> Most mornings I wake up. Most lucky mornings, and I work out with my trainer Yoav. Last thing, Heidi, for today: push-ups, military style, military. on the floor, no girly style. I can't imagine living anywhere other than New York. From the moment you wake up, there's this pulsating energy, and it's so exciting. And I look at my window, I see skyscrapers, and I exercise on my roof, and the whole city is in front of me, like a string of jewels, and it's, I just love it. Ten, that's it. You're done for today. Good uh, job. Great workout. Good job, Motek. Great workout. Good job, little girl. Okay. My typical day, there is a typical part of the day, and then there's changes, and you always have to be ready for that. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hi, Amy. 
I work with a small group of people. Isabel provides all kinds of support. <laughs> her job is so varied, you can't really pinpoint exactly what she does. And if you ask her, she'll say, I do a thousand things a day. And, and it's true. Amy O'Connor from Neiman's Call and Eleanor Mondo. Okay. Jessica Pastor um, got the dresses for Minnie Driver. Minnie loves the cow dress. So just like you said, it's like I called it. So uh, the JP call? Oh yeah, and he's confirmed for three. Right, I can't wait to show him the collection. I can't wait to see him. We haven't seen him in a long time. He's gonna love it. I know. Yeah, goody, goody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listen, hear your messages. Right, then pictures yeah. came. Pictures. I'm known mostly for my evening wear which is a little unusual because it's evening wear with a sportswear feeling. That's the twist, that's what makes it special. I always wanted to be a fashion designer and there isn't anything else I ever wanted to do. <laughs> Since I was a kid I was designing my doll's outfits and my family was in the textile business so I'd get all these fabrics and cut them up. After I graduated from FIT I had some assorted jobs but I never felt it was quite right for me. My dream was always to have my own collection, my own label, and my own company. And for as long as I remember, that's really what I wanted. And I just started on my own. I made five dresses. They were all in black. They were really beautiful. They were these floaty little evening dresses. And I took them to some of the best stores in New York, and I got orders. And that's how I started. Is this the dress we sent? This is the dress that we sent to Minnie Driver. Right, very sexy. Yeah. It's gonna look great on there. My design process in many ways is very orthodox and, and in many ways it's unorthodox. When it actually comes to designing, the fabric is the first and foremost element that I work with. It's like I'm creating sculpture with fabric. Some designers start with sketches as their inspiration and their motivation, but I don't. I work on a live model and I see how she moves and I drape around her and that's how I get my ideas and look at it and refine it and redrape until I get exactly what I want. In fact, fabrics are such an important part of Heidi's design process that she spends a lot of time finding unique colors and textures. Today, Heidi is off to see two of her trusted fabric suppliers. Hi, Hi. Hi. Right on time. Great. Great. Ready? Yep. Come on in. Come on in. Every season, I'm looking for fabric. <laughs> that is what I live for. Every season, I'm looking for something new, something different, something I haven't used before, something that I feel women would want. And I rely on the fabric suppliers and the mills to actually come up with new things. That is what they do. You're not in love. I can not tell. Heidi. Not in love. I can tell. <laughs> Show me something I know when you're beautiful. In love. I know when you're in love. What do you have? Some what about doing a paisley? Paisley for, for spring? I'll look. I don't think so, but I'll look. Okay. Now, I don't I'll want, always look back. Okay. I don't want you to get frightened. Here. Why would surely, I get frightened? I know you, Heidi. <laughs> I know you so well. Uh, will I be in love? I hope so. Hope Heidi. So. That is beautiful. Heidi, I think this love is it. so special. Love it. I, I can see it really. Let me feel it. Let me feel the cloth. Very lightweight, very delicate taffeta. Beautiful. Like, love it, Jack. I'm so excited I found something. So uh, I'll take great. it. Heidi is one of the foremost of the younger generation designers. Her style is completely understated elegance at its best. Many of the fabric suppliers specialize in different fabrics. One has a lot of velvet. One does beautiful silk prints. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Francois. How are you? Good, you? Very good. Francois at Solstice does beautiful lace. But you know, everything is beautiful. At Solstice, I know. <laughs> uh, metallic? No. No, no metallic. What about something like this? Too much, too much. Too much? Okay. What are my favorite words, Francois? Uh, what are my favorite words? Saddle, <laughs> sophisticated. Simple. Simple. Anything new and exciting that I haven't seen? No, I don't like them. Okay. It's, it's kind of pretty. It's kind of pretty. Yeah, <laughs> very happy. No, I don't like this. Are you crazy? What do you think of this one, also, Heidi? That? Uh... No, I'm not wild about that. No? Mm -mm. So here there was 
Actually, just... I love this. I think this is perfect for beading. We could do shades of gunmetal and shades of pearl gray, and maybe a few seed pearls. What Great. do you think? I think it could be fantastic. I think it's beautiful. This could be your exclusive anyway. Because it's new. No and one it has it. could be your own design. Love this that. is brand new. Good. I'm creating my own lace with Francois's help. And this way, it'll have my signature on it. It'll have my identity. And no one else will have it. So we're taking a fabric and making it exclusive to me. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to do a swatch. Okay. okay. Two weeks? A yeah, two weeks. How big you want the swatch? It's going to be like, like Two this. flowers. Two okay. flowers. That's Very it. good. Okay, so we'll do that. Great. Fantastic. Love it. Very oh, excited. I'm glad. Very good. Okay, I want to make sure that everything is perfect and pressed and gorgeous for JP. I think everything is. In a few moments, Heidi will be greeting J.P. Correa, a buyer from Barney's department store. This meeting will determine how much business Barney's will do with Heidi this season. You know what's going to be really beating, fun? Yeah? Cute little sleeve. Love me. will think that he'll, he will. He'll love this. But you know what's going to fun? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> yes. I'll kill him. <laughs> Before a buyer comes, especially one that I like a lot, I usually get a little nervous. I think he's going to really love the plum. I think this is a perfect dress for Barney's. Perfect. I love that. He is I speak to Isabel, and we go into the showroom. We check everything. We make sure that everything is perfectly pressed and steamed, that all the belts are right, that all the hangers are spaced perfectly, and that everything looks beautiful, that the showroom's immaculate. Let's everything make sure all the hangers have equal space between them. JP! Hey, Heidi, how are you doing? You? Good. Yeah, great. How's everything going? Good. Ready, oh. finally, with the fall collection. Pretty. Nice color. I like the plum. Plum and boss velvet. Mm -hmm. Cashmere, Cashmere my favorite. Beautiful. Doesn't feel good. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's great. This so, is beautiful. I knew you'd like it. I knew you'd like it. Can we see this one on? Sure. Okay. Wow, the fur trim looks great. Whatever JP likes, we'll show him on a model. My house model, Elena, who has been with me for several years, and she will show JP everything. <laughs> Hopefully. A brown, a little bit of trim. The trim is beautiful, very, very... Despite the fact that JP and I have a casual and wonderful relationship, I'm still a little nervous because he is a buyer and I am showing him the collection and I hope he'll react favorably, love it, wanted to schedule trunk shows and use it for advertising. So there is a lot at stake. Even though it seems to be very, very casual and we have a lot of fun, it's still business. So I think we've got a lot of things here that we can work with. Right. I think there's some great things. I love the plum and I really like the short dress with the short little cardigan over it with the beaded trim. That was really, really pretty. Is that your absolute I really, favorite? I really want to put that in the uh, advertising campaign. Oh, I think that'll be great. Heidi's really good. I think in the whole world of fashion design right now, the world is looking at the American evening market. Um, we do it better than anybody else does. And Heidi is really one of the best. Her business has been growing considerably with her. I think each year we're doing about 25% increase. And you know we're looking very much forward to having that business grow in the, in the future. How'd it go? Went great. I am yeah? so excited. He loved everything. He did? Just about everything. It's did, great. Did he like the short crop? A little short crop, beat a trim, fur trim cardigan, fox trim sweater, paisley skirt. Everything. Just about. Yeah? It's going to be great. Trunk shows. I don't really consider this a career. I consider that it is me. It's who I am. <laughs> we love that. It's going to be a great it's gonna be season. Awesome season. It's my soul. It's my essence. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. It's so much a part of who I am. And I love it so much that it's not a choice. I love where I am right now. I'm in a great place. And I'm enjoying every moment and every day. Did you know? Fashion Week is an exciting event for any designer. It gives fashion writers and buyers the opportunity to see a designer's collection for the upcoming season. The most prestigious Fashion Weeks take place in Paris, Milan, and New York City. Interior designers create a one-of-a-kind look for each client. Homeowners look for designs with the right combination of creativity and good taste. Call me, you can get me on the cell phone or on the beeper if you need me for anything. Catherine Daly Dunn's life is truly a juggling act. As an interior designer, she works on up to eight different projects simultaneously, helping clients realize the interiors of their dreams. 
Today, Catherine will rush about town, checking on furnishings, finding the perfect fabrics, and overseeing the moment of truth when all her hard work and effort for a client comes together. Thank you so much. What a great oh, joint effort. Terrific. We did it together. Just terrific. My name is Catherine Bailey Dunn, and I'm an interior designer. Girls, time for school. And my two daughters, Caitlin and Alexis, get up in the morning and after they're dressed and we find their backpacks and their homework, my husband takes them to school. Bye everybody, have a good day in school. See you later. Bye bye. As soon as everybody leaves the house, that's actually when my work day starts. And I just open the door to my office, which is an easy commute, and my workday starts. Catherine works on numerous projects in different stages of completion simultaneously. Right now, she's working on eight different projects. The baskets are to keep us organized. It's, it's absolutely essential in interior design to stay organized because mistakes can be made way too easy. So what we do is everything for each client is in a basket. So each client has their own basket and it makes it very easy to just pick up and run with the basket anytime we have to go to the, the client's house, to the upholster, anywhere. Hi, Catherine. Hey, good morning, Holly. How are you? Hi, we've got a full day today. I hope you got a lot of sleep. Excellent. <laughs> My assistant, Holly, arrives at nine o'clock. As soon as she arrives, we have a little powwow together discussing what the rest of the day is going to be like. Okay, great. Let's get Maggie's stuff together first. Okay. Here. All right. You get the carpet. Today, Catherine will be going to the Hunt residence, where years of work will finally come together when the living room furniture is delivered. My father is an architect, so growing up, I had a lot of influence from him, and I really believe that I started designing at a very early age. I was always interested in setting the table, making it a little nicer, doing something with the flowers or with the napkins. So I think that my design sense started very early on. Knowing that I had always had an interest in design, I applied to a college back east in New York called Parsons School of Design. And then I continued my education at UCLA. So I have a very broad education for interior design, which I think has only absolutely enhanced my ability as an interior designer. I would say probably 80% of the work that you do as an interior designer is office work. It's very, it sounds very glamorous to go antiquing and to look for beautiful fabrics, and that's always lots of fun. But the organization of being an interior designer is what is utmost important. If you are not organized, no matter how good your design sense is, your house is never going to come together and you will never have the continuity to give you a beautiful home. Right now, I'm stopping into one of my favorite fabric stores called Lillian Legere. Lillian. Hi, Catherine. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Fine. Good to see you. You too. I wanted to Good show you a fabric that I need help on desperately. It's for a client of mine, and I'm going to be using this for the sofa. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful Pierre Frey yeah, fabric. And oh, yeah, I need something though to go with in the dining room. The sofa and the dining room are really connected, so it has to be something that works. I don't know if we should pull out one of oh, these okay. colors. Yeah, it's a real open floor plan. Do you want to work with the reds or the greens? Oh, green is always my favorite color, but you know what? I, let's go somewhere else. Let's try the reds okay. or, or the salmon -y color there. Okay. All right, fam. Okay, great. When I'm looking at fabrics, I know what will work and what won't because of experience. It's not only the colors that you're looking at, but you're looking at the texture, you're looking at the pattern. You know what? Those would be fabulous draperies. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? Colors, all the colors. Right, and, and, I and I love the shiny quality, you know, with this nice thick fabric. Finding the perfect fabric is only part of the job. Today, Catherine is stopping in at the custom factory of one of her furniture suppliers, Gina B. Gina! Catherine! Hi, Cindy. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I came today to take a look at the dining room chairs for Huser and also the sofa for Smith. Okay. All right? Let's go. Okay.
At the factory, Catherine can see firsthand how her client's custom-designed furniture is progressing. A beautiful, absolutely beautiful job. If you're having a sofa made up close by to you, it allows you to go in and look at the sofa in different stages. Well, you know what? My clients are just going to love this with the children they have and the animals, the dogs that they have in the house. This is so durable and your craftsmanship is just so beautiful. I'm going to have them pick it up next Thursday. Right? All right. Wonderful. Okay. They're going to be you. ready. All right. You're welcome. Thanks, Gina. Good to see you. One of the most rewarding phases of an interior designer's job is when the furniture is delivered and the job completed. After years of planning and decision making, Catherine and her assistant Holly arrive at her client's home to oversee the installation of the living room furniture. Hi. Hi Maggie, great to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Very well. Good, good. I'm very rarely nervous about a big delivery because by the time it has gotten to that stage, I have done everything I possibly can to show the client what it's gonna look like. So what's My going bow. on here? I know, it looks gorgeous. Oh, uh, Craig's here. While the curtains are being hung and the furniture delivered, Catherine and Maggie will take the carpet rendering upstairs to see it in the place it will eventually be installed. When you're an interior designer, you're working with other people's money and there's a huge responsibility that goes along with that. This is money that they have worked hard for. They're decorating their house that they're raising their family in oftentimes. And they want to know exactly what they're getting and they want to love what they're getting. Oh, look at it. Oh, it looks fabulous. Catherine is so Maggie. terrific. Oh, I can't so believe it. Thank you so much. What a oh, great joint effort. Just terrific. I've got a couple more accessories I want to put on this. Oh, I'll be great. right back. Okay, great. So what's so exciting about today is that this is really the culmination of work that Catherine and I have been doing together for a number of years, beginning in the house that we had previously. And it's just so wonderful to see it all come together. And actually the final touch will be the carpets, that the samples that she showed me today. And when those arrive, then it'll just be sit back and enjoy it and really appreciate it. Maggie, here are some finishing touches. Look at these great little finials. I knew you'd love these. Here, just put them right here. Perfect. Gosh. The little touches make right. all the difference. They do. It's, it's the details. Great. Oh, it looks, it's so terrific. It looks beautiful. It's it looks so just terrific. like you. It truly does. <laughs> I mean, so nice. no. no, you did a fabulous job. And we're just Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love my job. I think I have the absolute best job in the world. My two passions are my family and my art as an interior designer. And I am so fortunate that I can do both of those. You've been given all the information. Now it's your turn to discuss the questions. Take a moment to talk about the following. What are some careers in visual arts? What professions require talent in design? If you'd like to learn more about what you've just seen, go online or check out these books at your local library. What is your favorite kind of art? My favorite type of genre in, in photography is probably like sports and nature and stuff like that. I love the statue of the David. I think it's just, it's phenomenal, like the movement and everything. It blows my mind. I guess oil is my favorite right now. Um, it used to be just straight pencil, but um, I, don't know, I love the oil painting now. And whether it be music, whether it be dance, whether it be theater or actually like physical artwork, anything, it's all very important to me. As you watch the second part of this program, keep these questions in mind. How would you define an artist? How is applying makeup a visual art? Fine artists need more than creativity, a steady hand, and a vision. One of their most important jobs is to find ways for the public to view their work. We're in Chelsea. This is the center of the art world now. This is where all the best galleries are. This was originally a neighborhood of chop shops where they come in and 
cars and fix them. Warren Eisenze is a painter who lives and works in New York City. And this is the Mary Boone Gallery, Charles Cowles, and my gallery, the Denise. Pretty much got things up, I think. Yeah, looks great. Wow. Warren has come to see some of his work that has recently been put up for display. So here's my corner. Here's your corner. A gallery works to sell and promote the work of artists. Carol Lee Corey is the director of the Denese Gallery. And we try to handle the public and the exterior world and to protect the artist so that they can be making work. Warren's work comes out of uh, the history of geometric abstraction. It's, it clearly deals with geometric forms and is clearly abstract. Um, it also relates to some degree to pop. Throughout history, there have been many forms of art and art movements. Some modern art abstracts its subject matter by changing or simplifying its appearance. Carol mentions that Warren's work comes from a history of geometric abstraction. During the 20th century, Frank Stella and others abstracted simple geometric forms. Warren's work also uses many of the colors that can be seen in pop art, a movement that began in the late 1950s. Pop art incorporated popular themes from everyday life and turned away from the more elite culture of art in the past. One of the most well-known pop artists was Andy Warhol. Carol explains some of the interesting aspects of Warren's work. There's an optical effect with his work that is unexpected, especially when you look at the cross sections of where the black lines come together and there's a sort of pulsing light that goes on. It makes me think of traffic patterns and you know traffic lights turning off and on. With the large number of aspiring artists in the city, Warren considers himself fortunate that the Denese Gallery has offered him representation. As an abstract artist, Warren does not paint recognizable objects. But that's not to say that the real world doesn't affect his work. There are things that, that are just there all the time. I'm not looking at them or thinking about them, but they do end up in the work somehow. It's things in the corner of your eye. There's a lot of verticality in the city here. There are the buildings, colors too. It does creep into the, to your work, I believe. Every time I move to a new studio, my work changes a little bit. I mean, if you look at this drawing and you look up at this window, that's not what I was thinking about, but it's there. Warren paints eight or more hours a day, five to seven days a week. Over here you can see a, a drawing that I started these the painting with. 90% of the time I'll start with a drawing. I'll make a series of drawings and when one of them jumps out at me and says it should be a painting, then that's one of the ones I'll pick. Warren mixes all of his own paints to get the exact colors he wants. crazy about this is that the canvas is textured so to try to make a really nice sharp edge you've got to fill in all those little bumps so you have to just keep going over and over again i've never painted people watching me before <laughs> this is really strange i wasn't quite sure what to do how to how to go about being an artist so i thought i would start with big brushes and do some house painting and make some money it's funny how often I think about that that experience actually really helped me uh, know how to handle paint in a brush. As a young kid, I was always drawing and copying comics. People would say, gosh, you should be an artist. You're really good at this. <laughs> but I guess I'd, maybe I'll listen to him somehow. In college, Warren originally majored in architecture, but then changed to fine arts. He didn't make a living from his work immediately afterward. His first job was to make technical drawings for a nuclear utility systems company. But what Warren really wanted was to make a living creating his own artwork. Coming to New York was a big help. You meet all these artists and you see how they do it. I was an artist's assistant for several years. 
I just I fell in love with the lifestyle. Just I, I love the idea of going to my own studio and listening to my music all day long. And the fact that I love to paint, it was just perfect. It was a perfect match for me. Besides the fact that I love to paint, I get to dress like this. Fortunately, I have this beautiful space to work in. I love being in New York. I always wanted to live here. It's a great way to live. My earliest serious paintings, they were abstract. I think they were much more cartoony, much more organic, the kind of shapes I was using. And I think slowly it's evolved into more classic abstraction and closer to that architectural idea. I also spent quite a few years working with encaustic, which is a process of melting beeswax and mixing dry pigment. But it was very fragile. I had one disaster where the heat went out in my studio and I came in and all my paintings had cracked. Now Warren works with oil paint. So as you can see, this paint is really thick. So I have to add some oil. I like salad dressing. A little vinegar. Turpentine. The time for me and during the day goes by very quickly. I feel like there aren't enough hours. Always for me, the goal was just to be able to paint full time. And so I feel like I've achieved my goal. It's almost like, is it a career? I don't know if, it's, if you even call it a career. It's a, it's a little like being a monk. Everything else is so fast. It's nice to slow the world down just a little bit. You know, it's really bad is when you forget that you've dipped the end in paint, you <laughs> At the end of the day, Warren cleans his brushes and saves any extra paint for the next day's work. And this will keep paint from drying till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Did you know? Painters and other visual artists work hard to find the best way to exhibit their work. They must grab the attention of the right people and find the most suitable galleries to display their art. And they often must have another source of income if they can't rely on the sales of their work. Working in modeling, theater, or the movies, a makeup artist must understand what a client wants and consider many factors when creating a new look. Growing up, Natalie Miller was always fascinated by the makeup she saw in fashion magazines. Now, Natalie is a makeup artist, creating dynamic, eye-grabbing looks for those same publications. To stay ahead in a field that never stops moving, Natalie must combine colors and techniques in exciting new ways. Today, Natalie will create a new look that she hopes will catch the attention of the fashion elite. Let me see open your eyes. Only you can make green eyeshadow work. <laughs> My name is Natalie Miller and I'm a makeup artist. At age 26, Natalie Miller has been in the fashion industry only a few short years, but already she has created dozens of glamorous looks for models and celebrities, and her work has appeared in such magazines as Vanity Fair, Cosmopolitan, and Rolling Stone. For Natalie, the creative process begins right here at home. Basically what I'm doing is I have a shoot later today and I'm doing makeup on a friend of mine and I want it to be something a little more unique that I haven't done before. So a lot of times if I haven't done a certain makeup before, I always practice on myself and then that way when I get to the shoot I know exactly what I'm doing. I look like a real pro. <laughs> this is how I taught myself how to do makeup actually. Um, before I became a makeup artist I used to be really infatuated with just magazines and how makeup looked in magazines and I used to just lock myself in my bathroom with my mom's makeup and uh, I would just pull the pictures out of the magazines and set them in front of me 
and then I would just start practicing till I could recreate the picture in the magazine on my face. I pretty much came from an artistic family. My dad is a jeweler and he manufactures his own jewelry and my mother is an artist so I was always exposed to the arts. As a teenager, Natalie worked as a model, but a year after graduating from high school in her hometown, Heartland, Michigan, Natalie decided to go back to her first love. She moved to L.A., paid her dues working at a cosmetics counter, and then got her first job as a makeup artist. After years of hard work, Natalie is finally enjoying success. Makeup is like acting, is like photography, is like any other profession out there. There's a lot of us and not everyone will succeed. And you just really have to want it and feel it in your heart. And if you do that, you will succeed at it. Okay, voila, I'm done. <laughs> Natalie arrives at the studio of fashion photographer John McKee to discuss today's shoot. Hey John, hello. Nice to see you. Okay, I brought magazines. Oh, good. Let's go over some ideas. Okay. I want to do it um, a little more moodier. I don't want it to be so bright and natural. Yeah, I that kind of beauty. I want to have a little bit more of an edge to it. So I was looking through. The shoot that we're doing today is a test that I've put together with the photographer and the model to go in our books. What my book is, it's actually a portfolio. So when a client wants to see my book, what's inside are photographs of my work, the makeup that I have done, different styles that I've done, so that they can kind of get an idea whether or not they want to hire me. Red. This is gorgeous because like this that? is going to be similar to the lips that I want to do. Okay. This color. Yeah, I want your great, rich lips okay. that you always do. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's you. I consider myself an artist. I have an artist mentality. I'm very sensitive. I'm very creative. To come into a photo shoot for a magazine where the photographer shows me the clothes and says, okay, what do you think? What can you come up with? That's where being an artist comes into being a makeup artist. So I'm just going to go to the store and grab some things that I need. All right. Okay. We'll be here getting ready. Okay. See you later. Right. Bye. Care. Makeup artist Natalie Miller must constantly stock up on supplies. Her favorite place to shop is Image Exclusive, a West Hollywood boutique catering to industry professionals. I always get excited when I come into this store. How can you not look around? <laughs> It's toys. This is toys. People, different people go to different stores for their version of toys. This is my toy store. I love these eyeshadows. These are great. They're wonderful. You always want to make sure that you're up to date with what's going on in fashion. You want to see what's the newest lipstick that they're using, what's the color that people are wearing. You always have to be up on every product and every color. You come in here for sponges, you spend a hundred bucks. Let's see how close I got today. Paper would be $70.74. $30 off. So, where's Stefiana? Hello. How are you? So nice to see you. Back at the photo studio, Natalie and fashion model Stefiana De La Cruz go over the wardrobe for today's shoot. It's I'm gonna set so up cool. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Look at all these fun things. Well, I just brought, I brought wow. colors and, um... Oh, and I like, love this. Oops. Yeah, that's just a two I dress. love this. That's gorgeous. By going through all of her clothes, I'm just seeing what she had brought with her, trying to kind of finish the whole project by picking out a certain piece of clothing that's going to look good with the makeup. So I think these three will be good. We'll start off with those three and go from there. When I arrive to a photo shoot, the first thing I have to do is set up. You want to have everything out and easily accessible. I keep everything pretty much in little bags so I know which ones is which. If I'm not using lip liners, I don't need to grab that bag. Here I keep little trays that I've cut out lipsticks and put them in so that you can kind of custom blend your own lipsticks. A lot of times most makeup artists have like a little kit of basic things that they always use. And I tend to carry almost anything and everything that I could use. Like this, I have such a variety of colors that if I go on a shoot and they say, okay, we want this type of a look, I have it. 
Steph, you want to come on over? Makeup artist Natalie Miller begins working on a glamorous new look for today's photo shoot. If Natalie successfully brings today's vision to life, she will use the photos to attract new clients. I always start with a moisturizer, and that's always wonderful because they might have dry skin, they might have had a breakout, or I want a shiny look. It's such great color right now. I do? Yeah. I use a brush with the foundation so that I can get the foundation applied exactly where I want it. I blend it with a sponge to make it even and smooth. After applying the main layer of foundation, Natalie then begins working on Stefiana's eyes. Only you can make green eyeshadow work. <laughs> Eyes by far are the most fun, especially on a beautiful eye like hers where she has a really just a big lid. <laughs> right now what I'm doing is I'm just going to create a really moody, deep, dark eye. And what I'm doing is that you always layer. The big thing is layering. So you look at a picture in a magazine and it might look like, oh, she has gray eyeshadow on, but really it's probably white with black with a little blue, you know? So it's like you layer a bunch of colors to get your final effect. So it's just, it's gonna look completely different from what it looks like right now. With the eyeshadow finished, Natalie gives Stefiana's eyebrows a dramatic arch. The eyebrow is very funky. Normally I would never do an eyebrow like this, but I'm taking some cream eyeliner and just applying it straight to the eyebrow. So Bad. instead of using a powder or a pencil, which I would normally use to give a really natural eyebrow look, I'm doing a very severe eyebrow. This is a tool that no makeup artist can live without. This is the, the pointed Q-tip. This thing for lips, when you're doing lips, you can clean it up for eyebrows. Like what I'm doing, I'm just cleaning up the eyebrow ever so, and it cleans it up perfectly. <laughs> Next, Natalie uses a cream eyeliner to give Stefiana an exotic boxy look, followed by a lightly blended blush. For the lips, Natalie applies lip liner and then brushes the gloss on, custom blending a color from her homemade palette. This is where the eye makeup remover comes in. Going like this. Natalie creates a perfect line on Stefiana's lips and then gives her a coat of mascara. The entire process has taken an hour and a half, but Natalie's latest creation is now complete. When it starts to come together and it's starting to look the way that you want it to look and the idea, your concept is becoming a reality, it's very exciting, it's very rewarding. Okay, we're ready. John, we're on our way. Let's take a look. Yep, there's those famous Natalie Miller lips. She has lips also. Does she? That edge. I want to show that edge. Makeup artist Natalie Miller has finished her latest creation, and to the expert eyes of fashion photographer John McKee and model Stefiana Dela Cruz, Natalie's work is a hit. I've known Natalie for about two years. I love her work. I love what she does to my face and as far as um, eyebrows, I'm picky about eyebrows. She does an excellent job. She's one of my favorites. Hold on one second. Let me just look into the light for a You know, at the end of a shoot, when you finish and it's gone so well and it's the most wonderful feeling in the world because you've made other people happy. Through your skill and your talent and your personality, you have made a project complete and it's just a wonderful feeling. We're all done. Great Good job. job. Thank you very much. Yeah, are you not Thank you. Us? Are you going to yeah, come to dinner with us? Oh, yeah. okay. But I'm not hugging you anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we get to hug later. Right. <laughs> Okay. You've been given all the information. Now it's your turn to discuss the questions. Take a moment to talk about the following. How would you define an artist? How is applying makeup a visual art? We hope you've enjoyed this assignment discovery journey into careers in visual arts. If you'd like to learn more about what you've just seen, go online or check out these books at your local library.